All right, we are uh, shooting this on 5th of uh, January, 2022. And uh, so as I'm talking, I have uh, Mr. Ganesh Srinivasan with me, and we're talking about his company, uh, Copywriters Club, okay? And um, so let's start with the beginning. So he has uh, gone through a little bit of goal settings in the beginning and uh, the fancy part of this particular company is now we have got more clients than we can actually handle right now at this point of time, so which is a which is a good thing, okay. Right. And uh, that too happened without any, any marketing and stuff. And uh, so here is what I have to ask you is now I think uh, we have gone through a complete two hours of deep sessions of into goal setting, structure settings, with building frameworks, and uh, setting things correct before you go. So it says like, you know, uh, so what, what I would like to tell you is uh, uh, there are many mistakes that I have done. I lost a lot of money also. I'll not say I lost a lot of money, but I think I, I lost a lot of time. And that time was also my intuition time as I learned a lot. And uh, let me tell you three truths, three truths. Um, there is no way, okay, directly or indirectly, you can save the money. There is no direct or indirect. That is a truth, okay? Some people put it in mutual funds, some people put it in some other things. So the first thing you need to take care of is the legal things, which is like tax. Please write it down. This is something which is which you cannot avoid. You have to pay tax. If you don't pay tax, right now the penalty is something like every day it goes folds. Then you have got bonus penalties. You know? And this might be so crazy because you might not know that one month you have not paid something. The fine will keep on building up, building up. And there are so many loopholes. You might not know. <clears throat> it is impossible for a normal human being to learn all the uh, different kind of formats and structures to this thing. So mentally be prepared that one part of your earnings you have to pay to somebody who can take care of this load. This is something that is very, very crucial. <clears throat> you need to pay <clears throat> or rather I'll say you are forced to pay. There is no way of hiding. Some people they hide out but overall look this is a world of transparency. Your money is no longer cash now. It's all digitalized. And you have your Aadhaar card, PAN card, and all these things connected. So make sure that you have a complete control on this. You need to spend money on these three different digital or whatever companies. Number one, you need to have somebody before you go live to consult for your billings account managing ledger books, accounts, you need somebody to pay some amount, but please get off this headache of it. So tomorrow it's gonna to be a pain. You need somebody. Number two, you also need somebody who can help you out in legals. Because there are so many ways people can pull you down. I mean, you have no idea. And now I think, uh, as, as days goes by, there are so many business rules change, new amendments have come, policies. And uh, if you look at today's uh, thing, the eight departments of business, which I proudly talk about it, this starts with R&D, marketing, sales, um, you know, legals, accounts, operations. Then you have your HR and management. All of them has different kind of legal uh, documentations, each one of them, okay? If it is marketing, just to, for example, let me tell you, uh, marketing right now is a good majority of the fund goes for you know, digital marketing. And in digital marketing, if you have run Facebook ads, they will always ask for a company policy page, a disclaimer page, terms and conditions page. These are headaches, which I'm sure uh, you don't want to get into this labyrinth of words, right? There's so much of, it's for me, legal is all about uh, <clears throat> English, <laughs> playing with English words and different kind of understandings. Right? Uh, sometimes it is very funny, but for me, I think uh, 
This is my opinion. If the legal documentation has pointers, it is good for you also, and it is good for the client also. Yeah. So look, there are <clears throat> there are four layers are there. Okay, from I'm moving from the accounts part to the legal part. The four layers. The first one is there has to be some sort of a legal documentation about the profit and the business that as a management we are generating amongst us. Okay, there is a seal of authenticity, genuinity, and that we are working together and we're going to stay together and blah blah kind of things. That is the first level of things. So, so legal also works as a bond, as kind of an elastic. You cannot go very far, you cannot come very close. Like you have your own dimensions of it. The second legal documentations we need is the connections between your team members and the company. Okay, that is the second layer. The third layer is all the joint ventures, your partners in terms of associate partners, vendors, uh, somebody whom you are dealing with, you know, suppliers. I think you need a separate documentations to understand them. Like <clears throat> that talks about uh, their deliverables, timings, understandings, terms and conditions, and mutual understandings are in these kind of things. So that's and with the time period. Plus, or whatever the, the the disclaimers and the policies you have. Okay, so <clears throat> first layer I told you about that the management connecting together, the bond, the directors level bond. The second one is the employee level bondings and all this, all documentations, whatever is there, starting from leave policy to appointment to offer literature to to stay back, even to fire them also. You need some kind of a documented structure. The third layer are these joint ventures. Even you have to fire some people also who are vendors. So the fourth layer is your customers. Okay, the customers, the bond between every transaction is what happens. Okay, what you are going to deliver, what you are not going to deliver. Be very very clear. Okay, uh, many times I saw some of the bonds will have jurisdiction of so and so. There is a reason for that because when you are there in the jurisdiction, you don't have to much travel out there. And if it is a court visit or something you have to do, you can. Um, so such an area, if you are good in Bangalore, or probably you are good in, um, you know, in connections, uh, probably where is your network? Is something that sets your, you know, the geography for jurisdictions. So don't say jurisdictions sit in Dubai, Abu Dhabi. <laughs> no, okay. You might not. If you are there, then it's fine. If you are not there, then it's not fine. <coughs> now, <coughs> after legals. Uh, you know, and uh, the accounts. Accounts also, you have got to understand. I told you about the taxation things, bookkeeping, ledger management, and then comes the GST filings. Uh, there are so many things are there, right? So uh, it is better to hire somebody, uh, you know, externally. So these are certain things like joint venture you have to do. But you know what? There has to be a constant reporting and a reviewing structure because this is where you will understand where you are. Very important for, for an owner, entrepreneur to know is uh, in terms of money flow, it's called cash flow management. How much do you have? How much you are supposed to get? How much is something that you are, are, are you, know, uh, you know, you have some kind of, what, what should I say, floating virtual cash. That means the cash is in the market, but it is not in your account. Because some people have paid you advance. Some recovery has to be done. How much to recover? Okay, and what is the transit amount? Like, is if it's a kind of transit amount. So these are certain things which you need to take in considerations. Plus, so when it comes to accounts, you need to also understand the different kind of payment stuff they have. People nowadays they do want to pay in one shot, so they all love to use credit cards, debit cards. So you have multiple channels of accepting money. So do you have uh, EMI options? Do you have part payment options? Do you have one shot payment with the bonus options? Do you have referral options? Do you have affiliate options? There are multiple payment stuff that you have to do. So, for example, you have there's something called a three layer payment or five layer payment. So, it's like it goes, it's called telescopic payments. So, pay X, then pay, you know, X plus something, then uh, next X plus Y plus Z. So, like that, you have to pay. So, do you have that kind of a structure, which is right now been followed by many people? Okay. So, these are uh, one to one point. Then you have got the deliverables. So again, you need to have a complete inventory of what I'm going to do. So for example, today I give you a 
a project, okay? And the project is like one lakh. So one lakh, if I pay, I need an instant immediate uh, uh, confirmation of your acknowledgement that you have received the payment. So that these kind of structures are very much important because look, the problem starts with expectations. So before I go to the next teammate, that is the operations, this is something that we need to uh, take in consideration. So immediate after payment, he or she as a customer should get what I'm supposed to get, what I'm getting right now, what I'm getting tomorrow, what I'm getting day after tomorrow, he or she should get uh, a complete roadmap of delivery. Otherwise, you're going to face a lot of challenges and services. You need unnecessarily call centers. Your phone will keep on ringing. They're going to be accountable. They're going to ask you 100 times, million times. Okay. So if you look at Swiggy and Zomato, they have a root map. You know why the root map was designed? So that unnecessarily calls are not made to the call center. So that saves a lot of money. So tell them, this is the route. This guy is in here. He's going to pick up your food. The food has been prepared now. So this is the entire milestones of your, uh, you know, getting the things at your place. So if you are in the service industry, please let them know step by step. It might take some time, but have a framework first. In that framework, you mention all the terms and conditions. <coughs> okay. So that is very important. Before you start the company, you need to have these things set. Okay. Um, don't put a lot of time here, but I think you can put structure. You can, every time you're sending this mail, you can rework on this. So the next thing that I want to tell you before we go deep into this is, um, now what we should charge, how much we should make profit, how much we should invest, and how much we should keep. Right, very important. So look, there is something called as 40x rule, okay? I don't want to believe in 100% of this, but I say this like, based on your um, situations, you can probably tweak five to 10% out of it. 40% of the amount has to be reinvested inside the company. If you are a startup, if you are a newbie, you need to really slow. You need to really, really push out of hard effort. 40% total amount has to go back to the company. And the company should invest only in pure assets and either assets or marketing. The ratio between both of them can vary between uh, around 60 to 40 percent. It differs. But minimum assets that you need to probably buy as a company, okay, from day one is with this 40 percent. The remaining 60 percent you need to divide, as I said, I'm talking about all about, uh, you know, uh, post EBITDA, that means all after tax reductions and all this. Things, okay? Take the tax out, whatever is left out, 40% <clears throat> have to invest in the assets. But <clears throat> the remaining 60% is something that you need to divide into uh, multiple parts. The first part you need to take care of, okay? This is all the profit. You have already put the expenses and all this things. Profit, I'm talking about only the profit. The remaining, uh, part the 60 percent one part has to be you know uh, spend or i'll say you know it has to be saved in terms of a buffer okay that means you're left with around 50 percent now this 50 percent is something that you can enjoy okay but yes i'll tell you how to enjoy all this things. so when you are a startup you cannot survive on 50 percent you have to put something for your learning and development team management building you know stuff uh, buying learning stuff, okay. You need some sort of an investment in resources, softwares, uh, you know, hiring experts, consultants. So this is where one X percent, my ideal number is around 10%. You should be spending at least 10% on getting your clarity. So you might need some experts, consultants, guides, support team. Uh, you need to travel something also. So this is the money for you. Cool. Then it goes to the, the partners and the shareholders and all these things. And you should have some the kind of a liquid cash as buffer in the bank. You should have. So liquid cash is something which is very, 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 very important. I am not a Elon Musk type of a guy. I don't 
because then he is one of the richest guys. But typically, you know what? Uh, he has when he ha he does not pay tax. You know, he does not need to pay tax because he says, "See, I don't have anything. I just have some stake. <laughs> that's all. I don't have anything to sell." So I think that's the same reason I think we should buy this. Uh, you know, forty percent of assets. We'll talk about that. Look, the company needs three different kind of product. Okay, right now in this world of twenty twenty two, this is be my advice. The three products that you need. Number one, you need a tangible, sellable product. That means it should have a very high demand in the market. It should have a supreme quality. It should have a high, you know, what to say, uh, supreme. When I say quality, I'm talking about its usability, effort, you know, and I'm talking also about its its workability, AMC, whatever. Okay. Third one, the quantity has to be marginalized. When I say marginalized, it should be certain amount. It should be under your control. That's what the supply should be in your control. So the this is one of the products which has to be. The real solid hard code. I should touch and feel this tangible product. This is something which is in my hand. So I like a couple of things. Like for example, uh, Tyler Pujish has one one company which is called as Mentorbox, and it has got all the books in a video format. Okay, so he has something tangible, even though it is digital, but still it is a product. So figure it out. What can be a tangible product? Invest an X percentage. Of that remaining fifty percent in creating this product, you need to have an R and D amount from your profit only for this, right? Okay. The second product should be should be should be a service product. It should be a service product. Okay, that can be a C, you know, a, a kind of a consulting services, or that can be a strategy services, that can be a design services. You need some sort of a service. The first one is product, second one is service, and third one is a digital product. Okay, you need a a digital product, a virtual product. In this case, I would suggest a training or program, or certification systems, group building systems, uh, easy to use systems, maybe some application stuff. Okay, formats, something digital. Okay, uh, soy files, books, anything. Okay, you need these three different kind of product lines in your company, and uh, this is where you get cons constant flow of income. So, after all these things, you keep two R and D structures to keep on doing this. You know, uh, this and then uh, for the service, the main work, you know, what you are thinking main work should be the thirty percent of the work. That is the the management of services. Look, uh, in Ken's case of a service industry, uh, my my exposure was somewhere around like twenty plus years in the service industry as an agency. Uh, the biggest problem is managing expectations and uh, getting time. Most of the time, as an agency, guys, we we never get uh, <laughs> the ample amount of happiness time that we call it as. We don't get it. So usually, we get this on a Friday. And we have to deliver by Monday, and our weekends are always good, always good. So, guys who are watching this, what agency? I'm sure you'll be feeling my <laughs> deep passion. <laughs> if you're smiling, give me a thumbs up. So, uh, look, the idea is not to take appointments on Fridays. Okay, not to take appointments on Fridays, and do not take appointments also on Mondays also. So the best time to keep your appointments is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. These three days, you have to have to have to build up your network. So how does it work? So Tuesdays, you are you know make sure that you are online. You are talking. You are you know meetup group. Some sort. I'm teaching you the marketing part of it. Give it online. Give it free. Okay. Let them book a call with you. Let them connect with your company. Let them download your scripts. They let them engage. Okay. Keep on giving them busy. Look, let me give you a very, very strict uh, formula. This is a formula. I don't know if you have it anywhere in this world, but I think uh, it's an epiphany. If you need to <clears throat> get money from someone, okay? If you need to get money, 
that means your customer client or whoever it is if you are supposed to get income okay income not outcome income you know earning then you need to be on high hope you are a hope providing guy hope you are the person who can give them hope only then the hope hope is what when you want them get the money you know the when this hope is a uh, you know hope equals realization realization of what realization of value exceeds the price when the client realizes what you are delivering is more than the price that you are charging and it is connecting to his expected that means expected results with this hope only then the money flows from out to in very very deep okay when you are somebody to give the money okay when you are somebody to give the money to someone okay then you should reduce the hope you should reduce that expectation Pay it off, get rid of him. Tata, bye bye. Don't prolong. Every problem in the world. I mean, I'll not say every problem. Most of the problem in the world, which is like money-oriented problem, happens if you do not have this hope management. Right. So, I think uh, if you can understand this part before you start the company, if you are a startup, if you are looking at very serious informations like this, I think this is where you should you should look at. uh there are a lot of other things that there department wise you can go deep into this and i think uh, all the entrepreneurs should read this book let me show you this book this is the book you know it is not about this book the thing is there are a lot of metaphors inside this book and uh, if you understand this another thing is leadership look bhagwan ram you know got lord ram rama whatever you call him as he was a prince he was a, he had the potential to invite his friends family people all our kings men on powerful fellows but he chose monkeys to win his personal war i think that is an amazing uh, leadership because this is what leaders should do leaders should convert monkeys to the big hanuman right so always remember in your team someone is going to teach you someone is going to be working without your knowledge someone is going to be doing double job someone is going to be uh, talking behind you there will be certain nonsense there will be certain nonsense so here is what you need to do you need to you know get into this four levels of team management number one you need to first make them connected with what is their purpose is it earning why they want to earn they will invest somewhere where they want to invest some play xyz why they will get happiness so go to that core that is the only driving force now for investing in that are they happy right now of the sensor no so they need to grow from here till here for here till here they are now going from a extreme pain to a never represented kind of a gains okay so when you have this gap your job is to reduce this gap by showing him hope showing him guidance showing him your what do i say structured thing so this is where i call it as the clarity mapping okay you need to have a clarity mapping <clears throat> clarity mapping should be something like this tell them what they are supposed to look at in terms of the goal what should be their way of methodologies of work give a clear statements explicit expectations what to do when with what resources what tools what manpower if it goes wrong okay crisis management what to do who is the accountability partner where they can get help or guidance or consulting from and where they should turn back if they don't get any answer okay and how long they should wait before they ring the bell and how often they can ring the bell what are the kind of things they have to do so these are certain hr based structures which usually we, we don't have a parameters to check you need to have a clear agenda so tell them how to plan morning when they come to the work exactly there has to be some 
code of conduct, some hygiene, some structured uh, of them to present uh, what they're wearing, how they should behave, you know. <clears throat> let them let them give freedom, but also keep them under the boundary. So it's like managing, you know, people inside a inside a structured gate. So leave them free. They should feel that freedom, but as they should have proper uh, boundaries at one point of time. There has to be limitations. What they can exercise, what they can exercise. What are the powers of team leaders? How the team leaders has to be done. So these are the structures you have to do. Number one. First, in the clarity map, you also tell them about how to plan, what to plan, and why they are planning all this. First, start with the why, then we'll go for how, and then we'll go for what. This is called as the golden circle. Okay. And uh, you need to have something called as C3. C3 means creative course correction. There has to be someone, whether it is you or somebody might be a startup, you need to personally sit and do that. If you have a one team also, you need to sit with him or her, talk about all these things and correct him, okay? You have to periodically correct him on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis, quarterly basis, half yearly basis, and yearly basis. You have to do that. So for this, you need to have proper matrices. You cannot suddenly say, okay, you are supposed to do that. My, my question is, have you told him that you are going to measure his output based on this? So you need to have a clear matrices defined, correct? So you can tell them, see, first month I'm going to look at this, 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 this. I'll be measuring you on this, this, this parameters. Okay, here is the day one, day two, day three. Weekly progress, daily progress, like that. To go. Now, how they are managing their time, what they need to do. Look, at the end of the day, you need to feed them. Okay. Your employees are the best marketers in the world. Are they talking about your company? Are they really happy? So yesterday I created a complete training guideline for a company um, who are basically into some sort of medical and hospital IT. And this training was something which is consists of almost like three days to four days. Look, if you are a company, if you don't have a proper skill set in the in the in the team. Then, uh, and you are looking at an outcome, that outcome will never be perpetual. It might give you some momentary happiness, okay, and think, oh, I have got 10 people. The 10 people are not going to be doing anything if they're not properly trained. So your training has to be something that you should see. Don't leave it to somebody else. You personally should see what they're getting trained on, what is the framework, what is they are doing in the first half, second half, third half, okay? So a training typically, uh, which I designed for these guys, okay, it's a typically a, a seven days training. The first day, first three days are complete theoretical training. That means classroom training. In the third day, it was more of simulation. Okay. So all these structures are, are, are uh, whatever I'm talking about, are taken from the Royal Navy and the Royal Air Force, or the Navy SEAL structures of training. Because in that kind of a training, there is no scope for mistake. If you train them with only one, without only one point, that one point might be the biggest loss for you or biggest gain for you. Right. So, this, this entire system has to be designed. So the training that happens, it has to be structured into these three things. One, personal knowledge awareness and, you know, uh, uh, what to say, accountability. Number two, you need to also have understanding about the product process and the company. Okay. And number three, you should have geography, customer, client, and uh, competition. So these three has to be done in three different days. You can't just one day you can do it, no? And the fourth element is the simulation. Simulation is give them a kind of a place, like a dojo, like a, a exercise area, where they are allowed to do mistakes. Don't make them go to the battlefield first. So in this place, you need to make them work. You need to create that kind of an engagement that they should work with a lot of integrity, passion, you know, authenticity, genuinity, and with commitment. Now look, in a company, many people say, okay, I come and work for me. Okay. It is not possible unless and until you have a personal mm -hmm. engagement. That's why this three days, for them, it should be learning. For you, you are also observing their attitude, their culture, their thought process, and their level of teamwork. You need to see all this. 
without which it cannot grow on B. So on the last part of this note of uh, you know the training, I would also tell you that you need to do some kind of uh, you know uh, mock presentations. How these guys are going to represent the company outside without you? Because they are also the spokesperson for your company. So what they should talk about? Where I am working? What I am doing? What is the company is all about? So it has to be completely structured guidelines, right? For example, in my company, uh, you know, I have a marketing management company also. So the teams are trained to talk about it whenever they are on the outside. So when we're working, so they don't directly say, I'm working in this company. The other guy might not know the company's thing. So you need to give certain kind of statements. So every part, you know, statements for them to realize that I'm working for so and so, right? So there is there's something. So for example, some people uh, look at the credibility set. Oh, I work for an ISO registered company, which is basically dealing with, uh, you know, uh, machines uh, to be used for uh, industrial constructions. Whatever. So you need to have something, you know, which gives them a little bit of a structure. And uh, if you have second layer of time, then say, okay, my my job is something where I help or I create or I curate, I uh, ideate, whatever. I solve, uh, I empower, or I lead, or I manage something. So let them have this grace. People love appreciation, okay? People love appreciation, that is like key. And now another thing is, at the end of this entire training, the, the team should be uh, you know, thankful that they have joined your company. That should come from, you know, the thankful is the precursor of gratitude, according to me. So thankful is the word, gratitude is inside, it's the, you know, the actions. So, for, for them, it might look as training, but technically you are appreciating them, you are encouraging them, you are boosting their moral up. And uh, there's something called as, uh, you know, uh, a structured, you know, uh, system of praising. Okay, so we're telling them that they should feel that praise that, wow, I should have joined these particular institutions earlier. So they should have this regret that they didn't join earlier. So indirectly, people think training is just learning about product and services, and which is wrong. This is the place where you should bond one-to-one. -one. Look, you need to build the team. The team has to build the business. The business has to build the entire empire. You take care of the team, the team takes care of your clients, and the client will take care of your entire team. Right? So with that, let me end today's session here. And I think uh, we have gone a little bit deeper. And um, there are structured approaches into this. There are structured approaches into this. Go slow. Now, for the uh, sales and marketing, I'll just talk about the sales and marketing for five minutes. And then we're going to go to the operations modules, might be in the next video. Uh, sales and marketing. Number one is uh, the marketing part, in, inside marketing. This is my number one take is. Okay. Talk about your ideations. And ideations has to be in three ways. So uh, the first thing that I would like to probably emphasize is the vision that you have. What is a vision? People think vision is like huge, broad, psychedelic things. No, very simple. Why are you doing what you are doing? That's the first step. Second, how are you going to do that? Okay, to what extent? And... Um, what would, what would be the outcome of it? Over, vision is over. So this is the structure first. So for this, you need to make people talk about it multiple times. And uh, in one of my sessions, I was talking about that NASA had an actual moon kind of a picture, you know, in their main main door and where people used to go. So that means they, they're mentally, psychologically, they are feeling that, yes, we can go to moon. Moon looks like this. I can achieve it. I can touch the moon. So that was a virtual representation of, you know, and, uh, and a structure of their goal. So have a system. So vision is that. So talk about your vision. Let people know that you know, there are so many law of abundance, law of affirmation, law of universe, whatever it is there. <laughs> okay, something is going to work. So here, you need to market your, your, yourself. Okay. You need to sell off yourself. How? You know, talk about every goddamn thing, how you're building the company, what are the kind of challenges you have. People love to know the story, 
right? You tell them about the structure, tell them about the intention, tell them about the problems, tell them about the, the existing you know, issues are there. Tell them about why you need a solution better than the existing solution. Okay, don't give them the solution. Don't talk about what you can do. Talk about what they can expect. Let their mind come up. Might be they come up with some beautiful ideas, right? So allow people to connect with you, share some stuff with you. Help them to listen more, talk less. Don't go and pitch, okay, elevator pitch, five minute pitch, stage pitch, and all this bullshit talk. You don't have to pitch. Go slow. If you are really a good flyer, bees automatically gonna come to you. It's okay. Hold on, wait. Produce the nectar. Let the wind do its job. So how, how you should do the job is you should produce the nectar. Nectar means the content. Okay, so content is a lot of content. Now look, I have a page full of uh, content which I wrote somewhere. Uh, yeah. So I have a page full of content which I keep on writing at first. Like what I can do. Uh, like for example, uh, uh, all the how to do's are very good pullers of attention. Look, you need to grab attention. Attention is a new currency. Your marketing job is first stop them to scroll. Number two, help them to read one line. Number three, help them to click something. That's it. Okay, this is the first level. If you can do the first level good, the rest of the things is easy. This is called as the one degree inclination rule. So if there is a pole of one degree, if you make it just one degree inclined, gravity will do the rest of the work. Don't bother. Right? Yeah. Uh, uh, I have written a lot of things, but I think uh, you need to have support hygiene and community hygiene also in your team. Support hygiene is like treat them as your best buddies, respect their privacy, um, only mention precise points that they needs to be heard, support them, okay? So there has to be support time, okay, what they can do, uh, special appointment with you. So you should be also connected to your team. The same thing happens with your colleagues and clients also. They should have a direct approach to talk to you. Talk to the CEO. You know, once a month, month, you can do all the special sessions. This is also part of the marketing you can do. Okay. And then build a community. Okay. You need to market this, build a community. So there are two kinds of communities you can do. One is those community who has no idea who the hell you are. Another one is a community who has already taken services and products and some sort of uh, things from you. So both this community should not directly mix. Then there will be problem. So how to engage both, nurture both, this is something which you need to do. The first one who has no idea who you are, you have to work on something called as intent of purchase. Okay, intent of purchase, how by showing value, how by showing the pain, how by making them feel that right now the conditions are not appropriate. So you need some tools, some sadhan. So this is where they are moved from an over stage to an high intent, you know, options, you know, opt-in, opt-in stage. On the other hand, the people who have already purchased things from you, you can make, make this uh, entire engagement to guide it out for number one, share your happiness out. This creates a testimonials, uh, good words, word of mouth. Number two, referral. You can generate multiple new leads. Number three, you can use them for, you know, uh, finding new ideations. Take advices and suggestions from them how to make things better. So that is where the second second community. So these two communities has to be managed time and now every time you need to manage them. Okay, and every time from group A to be group B, they should constantly go. Okay, and group B is going to give out many people. Who are going to be good in group A. So, how to do this is 
you need to have uh, you know i'll say felicitations um, best customer okay you have to have something called as customer delight customer behavior what you can add value in the second community let them talk let them share their ideas okay this will be very very powerful make this easy for them okay uh, for example i asked my clients also hey i need a testimonial and here is the complete video how to give a testimonial five minutes okay this is what you should talk this is what you should not talk question number one is this you should answer in this way question number two question number three so here i give them a structured approach this is called as explicit expectation mapping everything should have a proper clarity in the plan right and what they should get after this people are hungry for appreciation people are hungry for gifts and bonuses and discounts they love it and somehow i don't want to work with discounts so make superb appraising offers it's called as godfather offer it's called irresistible offer so might be i can take one more session on how to create irresistible offer today is more of uh, you know the startup goal setting positioning this is the third video i hope uh, this can help you a lot of things so with that let me stop the recording can you stop the recording so if you are if you are watching this videos if you liked it i will not ask for a thumbs up i am not going to ask for a thumbs up i want you to drop something in the chat box or just something in the comment write something give me give me something where i can understand that you read till the last okay give me something out there ask your challenges and questions and if you want to get into this community of people who are right now getting a lot of things from us okay look this is what i i don't have any uh, what you call it, slides and presentations and uh, i don't have fancy uh, pop up screens coming here and there and I, this is the more of a group in structure and you can ask me any button questions whatever a little i know i can tell you if it is not there with me i will try to find it out and if i can't find it out i will sit and work with you and i'll try to find out an option for you fair okay so down there you will be find link and uh, you can connect with me to perform this thank you so much thank you ganesh ji for this offer thank you uh, so probably you can end the session so thank you everyone for watching this